What is up guys, Kempai here. I just max started the new abyss on Asia, so I wanted to make this video kind of going over floor 12 of the monsters on floor 12, as well as a guide on how you guys can beat these monsters easier, such as grouping mechanics and uh, team compositions, and my thoughts on this new type of floor 12. Because spoiler alert, this new floor 12 has an even higher DPS check than the previous ones, and a lot more stall mechanics, annoyance mechanics. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Alright, so to begin, floor 12 does not have any debuff or buff. It's going to be a floor with the leyline flow being normal, aka no changes. And on chamber 1, you're going to be fighting some Nobushi to first start off. It's going to be 3 Nobushi, and after you kill off the 3 Nobushi, it, they're going to be tightly packed as well too. And they're going to spawn 3 Fatui power agents, but they are going to be in like a triangle shape split across from each other. It's uh, kind of annoying. And on the second half, it's going to spawn a Geo Bishop on one side, and the other side is going to spawn 3 Mimics kind of in a triangle formation, a little bit split apart too. It's going to first have the boar and then on the second wave it's gonna have a geo bishop on the opposite side and the ferrets or squirrels on the other side in a triangle formation as well too on chamber two it's gonna have a magu kenki first half then on second half it's gonna start off with the cryo fatu uh, sinsen mage on one side and it's gonna have like a little triangle formation of treasure hoarders throwing potions and such and then after you kill that wave it's gonna form a mirror maiden on the same spot where the cryo sinsen mage spawned with uh three treasure hoarders in a triangle formation again uh, the big thing to note here, though, is the Mirror Maiden will have a Hydro Aura that spawns bubbles, and the Cryo Sinsen Mage will have a Cryo Aura, which does the Cryo Ice Cage. For Chamber 3 first half, you're going to first fight off against a Ruin Hunter with two Ruin Destroyers on each side. It's going to form from a spawn from a wide triangle stance. Then after you kill these three monsters off, on the opposite side, it's going to have a Ruin Guard with a Geo Aura and two Ruin Cruisers kind of close to it, next to it, in a triangle formation as well, too. The one thing about this is the Ruins Destroyers are the tentacle ones that can choose to either dig down and pop up next to you or just shoot a laser beam to the ground and do an AoE. And the Ruin Cruisers are the ones that will jump backwards to kind of keep away from you. The second half will have a Ruin Guard to start off with, with the Ruin Cruisers in a triangle formation. And then on the second wave, it's a Ruin Grader with two Ruin Defenders next to it as well on the other side. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to do a chamber by chamber breakdown and side by side and try to give you guys some tips on grouping the enemies together and some of the ways that you can kind of kill these enemies faster as well as some team comp recommendations. I won't be going for speed because I'll be doing a live commentary on this kind of aspect. And so the teams that I used to max star on Asia were these teams here with Bennett, Sucrose, Shangling, Tartalia first half and Raiden, Jean, Xing Cho, Fish Show on the second half. I will be posting videos of the full clears if you guys want to watch those ones on the YouTube channel in separate videos. But I will say that I don't recommend you run Bennett on the second half because of the Hydro enemies and the Hydro bubbles, which could insta-kill you because they also deal reactions of 2 times damage or melt of 1.5 times and can double melt. I do recommend on the second half that you do run a Freeze team if you do own Ganyu or Ayaka. It could be really good, especially against the third chamber with the ruin monsters all right so for chamber one first half it's a simple triple nobushi setup I, like i said they're tightly packed together so they're quite easy to kill but after you finish off this wave you'll see here that there is going to be a uh, Fatui Power Agent. You see how they're kind of split from each other? So it's really good to have some sort of a Nemo unit to kind of bring them close so you can AoE them all. Uh, there's not much you can do in terms of uh, grouping them early on unless you are running something like Venti that can pick them all up and group them really well. Possibly even Kazuo's range is good enough. But for this, uh, for this account, we technically just used uh, Sucrose to group them, and it was kind of good enough. They also stay relatively close. If you have some sort of like burst, kind of like Tertalia, it helps quite a bit. Um, and you're just gonna proceed to kill them off pretty simply as long as you have enough damage. Just remember that the power for two agents have power resistance, so if you are bringing a power unit, you kind of want to bring resistance down if possible. So for Chamber 1 second half, a Geo is going to spawn on the north end and it's going to have three Mimic Hydro Mimics or Boars on this side. I recommend you start on this side here near the Boars because if you see here, the Geo Bishop will slam twice and when he slams twice, he ends up on his back and that's like free DPS time you can get while you work on these Boars which can be very annoying because they might start like attacking and splitting up. Also, really quickly, if you're unaware of Geo Bishop mechanics, if you guys have a shield when it does that rolly spin thing and they hit you, they'll end up getting stunned as well too. So bringing a shielder is definitely going to be useful against Geo Bishops if you guys need more free DPS time. 
So when the second wave spawns, like I said, the other Geo Bishop will be on the south side, and then the ferrets or squirrels will be on the north side. I recommend that you also kind of start on the ferret side if you can to make the Geo Bishop jump on you and get, get on his back and be stunned for a short duration so you can get extra DPS time. Other than that, it's not a big issue um, dealing with these monsters uh, outside of using Bennett, which can pyro infuse your character, and if you're pyro infused, the squirrels could end up. Vaporizing you and dealing two times damage and potentially killing your units. So for the Chamber 2 first half, we're going to kind of do a full run here. One thing you guys want to know is uh, that while he's uh, sitting down and prepped, you can still generate energy particles off of him. So if you did not fill out your uh, burst skills on the other chamber, you could definitely do it here. I mean, if you didn't fill out your burst skills on the first half. You guys kind of got to learn how to time and dodge these attacks. And remember, once his HP bar reaches the S and Sword Master, um, he will uh, go into an invulnerability state. So don't try to use like heavy bursts like Tartalia melee bursts. You can use um, Tartalia range bursts or something like that. Just try not to overkill because it will not go below the S and Sword Master at all. Also, for this ethereal one, you're going to want to dodge as soon as he goes downwards. If you guys can time that right, if you dodge too early, you might get double hit and die. One other tip I have for this one is after he does the drop down, he'll either do an attack such as the sheath attack like this, or he'll dash backwards immediately. So if you know he did this sheath attack, you know his next one is he's going to jump backwards. So you want to keep him toward his back towards the wall, and then not use things such as your Bennett Burst or other stationary bursts that are on field, because then uh, he'll dash away from it and you won't have anything to hit. Next, uh, the next tips I have is just try to always keep his back against the wall. The only time he'll move away from at this point is if uh, he does the one where he dashes through you and does the multi-slash attack. Also, if you have a lot of damage, you can always choose to hold back on using some of your burst skills so you can specifically iframe some attacks if you're not very comfortable with dodging. It's better that you end up uh, using iframes to survive if you just hold them for like one or two seconds rather than trying to go for like a crazy fast run and dying over and over. All right, so for Chamber 2 second half, you're going to be fighting the Cryo Mage as well as the Treasure Hoarders that throw potions. One thing you can do is if you have Jean, you guys can definitely use a uh, fall damage cheese where you end up throwing them in the sky or throwing them towards a wall. It does some pretty good damage. If you saw there, this Jean just did 55k and I've done something like 100k before as well too. I definitely recommend that you kill the Cryosensin Mage first because if you let her live and go for the Treasure Hoarders first, they'll, she'll end up building that shield where you're going to have to kill her flies just to be able to reach her. And that can be extremely big time waster. And this one is a pretty tight timeline in my opinion. Uh, against the Mirror Maiden, you just got to remember that uh, she will teleport backwards. You'll see here this gene just did 140,000 damage on fall. If you end up pairing that with Sucrose, it can do even more damage for even bigger cheese, which I will probably try to show you guys in this video later. Also, when it comes to the Mirror Maiden, you're able to pick her up and throw her as long as you don't have a marking on you. If you get hit by one of her hardware attacks, namely the ones where she spawns the puddles on the floor, uh, it will cause you to get marked and it will um, make it so you can't use a Nemo CC. You'll see here that I got marked and because of that, let's show you here. Uh, I'm going to try to grab her this time around and you'll see that no matter what happens, she's not getting picked up. Other than those tips against Miri Maiden, the only other thing I have really to say is try to bring somebody who, or, or a team that has a lot of AoE so you can keep blowing up the bubbles or popping the bubbles as soon as they spawn. Something such as Raiden's auto attacks can also work for this reason because uh, her swings are pretty wide to be able to hit all these bubbles so you don't accidentally run into them while you're trying to dodge. Alright, so for Chamber 1 first half, I recommend you start on the left side next to this Ruin Destroyer. The reason for that is because the other Ruin Destroyer might teleport over to you and then allow all three enemies to group up so you can just start AoEing them all together. Remember that these Ruin Destroyers can be partially disabled. When it does its laser beam, its core is exposed, as well as when it like goes on the floor and blooms open as well too, its core is exposed so you can disable them as well there. Also, after you kill these ones, a Rune Guard with two Rune Cruisers will spawn. And you gotta remember that the Rune Cruisers can be disabled when they are trying to do one of the attacks with its core exposed. 
Uh, what I recommend here is because the Rune Guard does have a Geo Wave, I highly recommend you kill the Rune Guard first and then deal with the Rune Cruisers afterwards. If you can AoE them, that's definitely great. Uh, what you might want to do is try to stand next to one of the Rune Cruisers and have the Rune Guard also pair up with you. Otherwise, you know, just try to kill the Rune Guard ASAP and then try to get the Rune Cruisers stacked on top of each other with their cores exposed and you disable them. Uh, the other thing to note is that the Geo Waves come in sets of two, where it'll wave one time and shortly after it'll wave again. Then there'll, there'll be a moderate pause before the next two waves come again. Alright, so for Chamber 2 second half, I recommend you start on this other side of the Rune Cruiser, try to make it jump backwards towards the other one, and continue that route and AoE down the Rune Guard and one Rune Cruiser and just try to have it back up into the other one, such as this. As you can see here, this Rune Cruiser is currently disabled. If you hit its core two times, it will fall down. Now when it comes to the Rune Defenders, just bear in mind that they can block their attacks from the front. So you definitely want to be a little bit wary of that when you use characters such as Yoimiya or Hu Tao um, or other kind of one directional attack type of characters. When you do a lot of AoE, it won't matter too much. And there's not really many tips for the Ruin Grader, just kind of hit its knees. If you really want to try to disable it, you can. But with the damage window or damage DPS check kind of being a little bit up there, I really recommend you just kind of unga bunga and try to hit as many targets as possible with some sort of AoE setup. Alright, since this video is getting a little bit long, we're going to try to keep the team comp recommendations a little bit short. If you guys do need more extensive team comp recommendations, you guys can always come by my Twitch channel and ask for a team comp recommendation for this. But like I said earlier, I don't recommend you bring Bennett on the second half, but if you need to, you definitely can. It's just that when you fight against the Hydro Mimics as well as the Mirror Maiden or the Cryo Sinsen Mage, you could get melted or vaporized if your character is standing inside of Bennett's ultimate by being pyro infused. Uh, he is often better on the first side anyways against the Magu Kenki and various other things, so you have a higher damage output. Second half, my biggest recommendation probably is to run some sort of freeze team such as Ayaka, Mona, Venti, and Diona or Zhongli. Or you could replace Ayaka with Ganyu, something like that, because as you saw earlier, the Rune Cruisers teleporting around can be very annoying. Same thing with Rune Defenders, if they end up putting their shield up, it can be very troublesome as well too. In addition, if you do end up freezing the Mirror Maiden or the Cryo Sinsen Mage, it's just free damage. The Cryo Sinsen Mage does have Cryo Resistance and the Mirror Maiden does have Hydro Resistance, but that's why you usually bring a Nemo character such as Venti or Kazo or even possibly Sucrose to resist down that uh, resistance. If you end up having trouble meeting the DPS check for Chamber 2 second half, you can always run Jean alone for fall damage as I showed you guys earlier, or do the Jean plus Sucrose cheese which does massive damage because fall damage is based off of max HP of the target as well as velocity speed of when they hit a wall or the ground. Another type of team you could run on second half that could be successful is a Taser Tomp, which is a Hydro plus Electro to do Electro Charge over and over again and bounce to multiple enemies in AoE. You can use a lot of different variations for this Taser Comp. The old school method is using Sucrose, Beidou, Xingqiu, and Fischl, but that does rely on double mitigation from Beidou Ultimate and Xingqiu's swords to reduce damage and Xingqiu's swords to heal you. So you do have to be a little bit more skillful to dodge. You can also run something such as Raiden on that team, replacing any of the characters. I recommend Beidou if you're going to do that, but that's more of just Raiden single target type of damage. The other alternative you can run for the Taser setup is running one with Kokomi, Beidou, Raiden or taking Kokomi out with Tartalia and because Raiden doesn't work with Beidou for using her Arc Lightning, you can always use Kokomi on Tartalia during that moment and during something such as Tartalia or Kokomi's long cooldown before they can get their burst or their elemental skill again, you can use Raiden with Xingqiu or just a Nemo character to get resistance down. Alright, so for the first half, I would mostly recommend you use a mono pyro team such as Bennett, Kazuha, Shangling, and a flex pyro of Hu Tao, Yoimiya, Diluc, uh, Klee, anything you want to run. Or you can end up doing Zhongli and just running mono pyro with Zhongli's shield resistance down. The alternative you can also do is running Tartalia with Kazuha or Sucrose or even possibly Venti, but with Emblem of Seraphate and the catch for Shangling, you typically don't need Venti's energy refunding. 
I do want to note that using Yoimiya on the first half could be very useful because you can disable the rune cruisers when they are just sitting there with the auto attacks. But you would want to run Yoimiya on something such as a mono power team because as you may know, Yoimiya does have a lack of AoE. So something such as Kazua plus Shangling could make up for that AoE while Yoimiya ends up trying to shoot the cores with auto attacks on the rune cruisers so they don't keep dashing away. Another team that will still work fairly well is going to be the Zhongli Albedo Xingqiu Hu Tao composition because you can still just do massive single target damage and AoE with your ultimate. Um, you can always replace Albedo with Sucrose as well too. I would just recommend that you still bring VV and reduce down the Hydro Resistance and do some more additional damage or just stack purely EM if you can't get an EM gear set. Now I want to give a quick moment to just mention some characters you might want to be careful of using in this new abyss. One big character is kind of Xiao because when you do plunges with Xiao against Magu Kenki, he will be more likely to dash through you and start doing the sword wave combo. And when you do plunges against the Ruin Hunter, it is very likely that it flies up and starts shooting missiles like crazy. And when you jump against the Ruin Guards, they'll turn around and shoot missiles at you. Especially with the Geowave, missiles plus Geowave can be very deadly even if you bring a Zhongli with you. The other character you want to have a little bit of caution with using is going to be Eula because the Ruin Monsters have a lot of physical resistance so your damage will be nerfed already from the get-go. But... This doesn't mean you can't use Shower Eula to beat this Abyss. You just might need to play a little bit better or have a little bit better stats than other characters as well too. Also note that when you use Kazo's Elemental Skill, especially his Elemental Skill Hold, you could still cause the Ruin Hunter to fly up, Ruin Guard to shoot missiles, etc, etc. So kind of be careful of that. Another thing you do want to take in consideration when you are building your team comps is if you are a little bit on the weaker side, you may want to take advantage of the Blessing of the Abyssal Moon buff. This Moon Cycle buff is going to be one where when a character has 50% or more energy, they'll gain 6.5% increased attack bonus every second and with a max stack of 10. So you can get a total of 65% increased attack bonus, but if their energy drops below 30%, they'll lose all the attack buffs. So this is very good on characters that don't rely on their burst skill for damage, such as Hu Tao, Tartal, uh, Yoimiya or even Ganyu as well too. Now to help end this video I want to just give my opinion on this abyss. I think this abyss has a higher DPS check than the other previous ones. If you also add on the kind of annoying mechanics of the hydro aura with the bubbles, the ice cage, the fire aura on the first chamber uh, as well as the geo wave on the third chamber and the rune cruisers teleporting away from you, rune defenders putting up a shield. I think it's absolutely BS that MiHoYo keeps doing this. Instead of creating higher floors to give us more Primo Gems, they keep trying to just make the floors of the Abyss have higher HP requirements or more stall mechanics to make it so that the players, especially free-to-play or budget players or new players, have a harder time getting these small amount of Primo Gems from the Abyss. That's going to be all for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully it was helpful to you in clearing the Abyss or even possibly max starting the Abyss. Make sure you guys leave a like, comment down below what you guys think about this new Abyss. Make sure you guys subscribe for more Genshin Impact guides. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash for Genshin Impact content as well as account reviews and Abyss help. Make sure you guys follow me on the socials of TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And make sure you guys join my Discord to be part of our Genshin Impact community. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace! Also, if you guys want to check out some of this blue tape, make sure you check out Suma Forte. Link in the bio below.